Hello, I'm Professor Barba, and I have a demo now with NumPy arrays. Um, let me start a new notebook. I hear, here I'm in the Jupyter dashboard. I'm going to start a new notebook, Python 3. And let's uh, leave this first cell as a markdown to write some notes. So I'm going to do NumPy arrays today. Well, it turns out that in technical computing, we often need a different data type that is called an array. It is a sequence of values of the same type. It behaves very similar to a list, with the difference that all of the items are of the same type. Um, and when you know that all of the elements in a sequence are of the same type, it turns out that um, the computations can be a lot more effective. So equivalent methods for arrays are faster than those for lists where um, you can have different types in the elements. So how do you use arrays in Python? Well, they're not immediately available in the core Python language. And we have to extend the language in our session by uh, using a library. So NumPy arrays are available uh, in uh, libraries, um, the NumPy library, and we have to import it. How do you import it? You, have, you use the keyword import and the name of the library, in this case, NumPy. So I'm just going to execute that and no output. Something happened, but there's no output. It was um, executed and a whole extension of the language was loaded in my session giving me the n-dimensional array and a bunch of functions that allow me to operate in arrays. To call an NumPy function, we have to use um, dot notation now, uh, prepending the library name. So we use, um, for example, to create a new NumPy array from a list of numbers, we could do NumPy dot array, and the argument to the NumPy dot array uh, is going to be a list, say 3,5,8,17. It's um, now an array, a different data type than a list. Uh, we can also create an array filled with zeros or with ones using the built-in functions numpy dot um, ones, the number of ones we want in the argument. Oops. I forgot an S there, and here we are, five ones inside a NumPy array, or NumPy dot zeros, three, let's say, and I'll get three zeros, a NumPy array with three zeros. Sometimes this is useful to start some calculation with, a, with uh, some numbers that you're going to modify afterwards. You can also create a NumPy array with evenly spaced um, values in a uh, in an interval. For example, numpy dot a range um, six. Why not? Gives me a sequence starting at zero and with six values exclusive of the last one. So that's a trick to remember. I could also do numpy a range say six comma twelve. And that is the start and end values. So it starts at 6, and it goes all the way to 12, but not including 12. So that's something to remember. It's not inclusive of the end values. I'm going to add a few empty cells to move up a little bit. Let's see. So remember here, I'm going to add a note as a comment here that the, we have a start, comma, end that is not inclusive. That is what we've done in that last cell. We can also do numpy dot a range, um, say six comma twelve, and add a third argument that is our step, say two. Now it steps by two, six, eight, ten, but twelve is not inclusive, so it's not part of the resulting array. Another way to create a list of evenly spaced values is the linspace function. That uses, instead of a step, the number of values that you want. So you could do numpy.linspace, say, 6, comma, 
12,3 and it will be an array with three values, 6, 12, 6, 9 and 12. Now here, this is tricky sometimes to remember because Linspace is in fact, the end is inclusive. And this could be a little bit confusing, but the purpose of this is to match the behavior of the linspace function in some other languages where it also is used. Uh, let's see, let's just check what happens if we don't give n uh, the number of elements in linspace. So numpy dot linspace, just 6 comma 12, gives me a rather large array. So let's check the length of that. Fifty. It turns out that Linspace has a default default number of elements, and that's fifty. Okay, just a couple more things for this um, demo. Array operations. Let me just use a little bit of a heading here. Array operations. Okay, so let's assign a name to some arrays to um, do some operations with them. Suppose that I have x array, so I'm going to now assign it to a, assign the array to a variable name, and let's do numpy dot linspace to create an evenly spaced numbers from say minus one to one, and I have nine of those. Uh, and let's at the same time print it to see what came out of uh, this array creation. And here we have it. It's an array of the uh, numbers evenly spaced from minus one to one, nine of them. So now let's take the square of that. How would we do that? We're also going to save it into Y array. And that's the square of the array that we just created, X array. Square with the double asterisk operator to get the square. Oh, let me just print it right here so I, we could see the output. There it is, the square of, a, of an array element-wise. We could also take the square root, so let's do the square root of the previous output. Z array equals uh, numpy, that is a built-in function of numpy, square root of y array. Oh, again, I want to print it so you can see the output. And as you can see, this square root gives me all positive numbers as it should. Another thing that we can do is array addition. So let's do, I just have one more example after this. V array equals X array plus Y array. And this one is element wise addition. So let's see how it looks. As you can see, um, um, I have now added X array right up here with V array, sorry, with Y array, and some of those uh, results are zero. Let's do uh, multiplication, it's also element wise. So W array could be X array times Y array. And here we have the element-wise multiplication. You can also do division of arrays, but you have to be careful not to divide by zero. And if you do divide by zero, you might get some nasty error message or warning. So what's going to happen? Let's do just as our last example, y array divided by, sorry, x array divided by y array and sure enough, we get some nasty warning there that says invalid value encountered. And here we have one of our results, NAN, which means not a number. Divided by zero is not a good idea, so always check for that. Those are NumPy arrays. I hope it'll get you started.